So far, we've had four big Resident Evil remakes, and whenever they come out, cut content is always a hot topic of discussion. Things get cut for pacing reasons, or budgetary reasons, or even because of a failure to understand their importance by the people making the remake. No matter how big or small, how justified or not they may be, someone will always be upset over something that was cut. I was quite upset about it in RE3, moderately annoyed by it in RE2, and for the most part unfazed by it in RE4, outside of a few key moments. I know I'm not alone in this, and I wanted to talk a little about why I think these cuts register differently for me, and for other people. The RE1 remake on GameCube is heralded by many as the greatest remake of all time. So good that for many fans it flat out replaces the original game. It truly feels like the game they wanted to make the first time around. The original director came back to oversee it, it cuts virtually nothing, it adds new story elements, locations, enemies, and puzzles. It better tunes the gameplay and gives the game a truly creepy realistic horror movie look that you know they wish they could have done on the PS1. No one talks about RE1 Remake as being incomplete. Hell, you could even say it should have had cuts. I don't think anyone would miss that weird random part where the bee specimen comes alive for no reason. The only thing they did cut, as far as I remember, is a part of the second floor library. The library got turned into the location for the second Yawn boss fight. I like this change. But in the original, there was another room in this section that gave you a view of the helipad from afar. I've never liked that they cut this out because it gave you a real goal to work towards, a way out. This being the only cut, it's hard to get that bent out of shape over it, but it shows that even the gold standard of remakes, a remake that improves on pretty much everything and stays super faithful to the source material, can end up cutting things. The RE2 remake of 2019 is a different story. With a change in camera perspective, we also got a change in combat, and being so far removed from the original in time, 20 years after it came out, it was inevitable that more changes would come. The police station got the RE1 mansion treatment, staying mostly the same but adding new spaces, reimagining a few rooms, adding new points of connectivity, and changing the route. But after that, it's an all-new experience. Outside of certain key moments being preserved, like the bridge and the frozen vial machine, the sewers and the laboratory are almost entirely new designs, with new objectives to complete. Whether you like the new versions or not, they don't fall under the category of cut content. They were just redesigned. RE2 Remake technically takes you through every location or sequence of the original. Some have been significantly reimagined, but they are there. Leon and Claire are both playable and have their own unique versions of the adventure. Boss enemies and common enemies are still present, however they cut the spiders for some reason. But regardless of whatever changes or cuts were made, the core Resident Evil 2 experience remains intact. However, the B scenario from the original was horribly mangled as it was never planned to be in the game in the first place and was shoehorned in due to fan backlash. The original's B scenario allowed you to see the same series of events through two different perspectives. Instead of it feeling like either Leon's or Claire's experience, you could load scenario B to get the other perspective as the A scenario character progressed. You got access to different areas, different boss fights, and unlocked the true ending this way. It was an important part of the experience, though probably not one that the majority of the 6 million people who bought the game, and several million who rented it, actually played because we know that a lot of people don't even finish games, much less play through them multiple times. But it was an important part of the experience for a lot of the fans. It was an important part of RE2's identity. It made it special in the series. No other Resident Evil game even attempted it again. So to see it butchered into basically just an A scenario remix with the same bosses and no special character interactions or consequences, it was a tough pill to swallow. It takes a game that gives a stellar first playthrough experience and ends up letting you down if you're expecting a good B scenario. It's an indefensible cut. However, it's a cut that makes itself known to you after you still get that first playthrough of an excellent game. That's a really important factor in this discussion. RE2 Remake's B scenario is a problem, but the core experience of RE2 is still solid. RE4 Remake largely follows the formula of RE2. 
Like the police station, the village is mostly the same in its structure, adding some expansions and remixed encounters. And the castle has the same general feel and some of the original rooms and moments, but it's changed up enough to almost feel like a new map. By the end, the island feels almost entirely redesigned. Since RE4 Original is a much longer game than the original PlayStation trilogy, there was a lot more to consider for possible cuts. So while the RE2 Remake main campaign didn't see a lot of noticeable cuts, RE4 cut or consolidated several areas, a late game multi-phase boss fight, and some important character moments. Some of this was done for pacing, some of it was done for tonal changes. Whatever the reasons may be, they are cuts. And not everyone likes them. It's still a very long game, many people taking 18 to 20 hours on their first playthrough, so it's not like we got a neutered experience. And what keeps RE2 and RE4 solid experiences despite their cuts, despite questionable level designs or aesthetic changes, is the preservation of their gameplay. You have to ask, what are the original RE2 and RE4 all about as games? RE2 is about exploring and figuring out the puzzle-like maps you're in, managing a tight inventory, scavenging for resources, solving puzzles, and of course killing zombies. The RE2 remake preserves this experience and expands on it greatly. It still has the soul of RE2 Original's gameplay. RE4 Original is about high-octane action, multitasking while facing hordes of enemies, fast combat decisions, and exploring the map for treasures used to buy new weapons and upgrades. RE4 Remake preserves the experience and expands on it greatly. It has big changes in resource management, staggers and melee have been retuned, it adds new combat abilities like the parry and a breakable knife, you're able to move while shooting and enemy AI is different. There's plenty to make it a unique experience separate from the original, just like the RE2 Remake did, but it still has the soul of RE4 Original's gameplay. That brings us to the RE3 Remake. When talking about the disastrous RE3 remake, cut content is the first thing people bring up. You can set aside all the critiques of the new Jill, the underwhelming RPD section with Carlos, the crappy nemesis boss fights and how they turned him into a joke by having him not kill Jill when he had her right in front of him with a flamethrower to her face. We can set that all aside. The cut content is the biggest problem. At the end of the day, three major cuts make RE3 the unforgivable mess that it is. First is the Clock Tower. The Clock Tower isn't just a place you go to like the park or the hospital, which I admit is a nice redesign in the remake. The Clock Tower is the single most memorable location from the original game, home to several of its most important moments. Early on, when we're still setting up the danger of the Nemesis before you see him, you come across a postcard in the bar showing the Clock Tower. So in the first 20 minutes, you have the image of this place in your mind. On your first playthrough, you're likely spending two or three hours exploring Raccoon City, eventually trying to get the train running to get out of town. The Nemesis ambush causes the train to crash and you end up at the clock tower. It's immediately an important and interesting location because it's the first real isolated location you've been to. Sure, you went to the RPD earlier, but just to get a lockpick. And you'd already seen the RPD in RE2. It's a quick side trip and then back to the city exploration. The Clock Tower is the first time you're in a building unique to RE3. This is our Spencer Mansion moment. The moment we say, wow, what, what is, is this, this place? And it's not even that big of a map. Compared to the mansion or RPD, the Clock Tower is nothing. A few rooms on either side of the first floor, a garden, and then a climb to the clock at the top. It's special because it's the first time it gives us the feeling of wonder after spending hours in a maze-like city. It's home to three, count them three, separate nemesis encounters. He appears on the roof where you can shock him with the electric wire, he bursts through the wall when you play as Carlos and runs through the fire in one of the series' best jump scares, and in the single most important moment in the game, after you've completed the clock tower and solved the puzzle at the top, you've signaled a rescue helicopter to pick you up. Is this it? Is the nightmare finally over? No, bitch, Nemesis is here with a rocket launcher to trash your plans. He blows up the helicopter in one of the most awesome scenes in the entire Resident Evil franchise, and then you have a boss fight. The Clock Tower is a small map, but so much happens in it, and it's all just gone in the remake. It's a baffling cut that I think only could have happened due to a limited budget. 
It's made much worse by the fact that the city was drastically cut down as well. As I talked about in my RE3 review from 2020, the giant sprawling city map that had you running all over the place, trying to figure out where to go, what to do, unlocking new areas and finding puzzle pieces, was cut down to a whopping two parallel streets with a donut shop in the middle to connect them. There's nothing to do here, nothing of interest. It would be like if RE4 Remake opened with the village fight and then immediately let you open the insignia door and now you're already at the church rescuing Ashley. By removing the city exploration and cutting the clock tower entirely, half the fucking game is missing. This isn't just a cut boss fight or a small late game map or a bonus scenario that adds context to the main story. We're missing half the game. Significant aspects of gameplay were gutted as well, because again, we gotta ask, what are you doing in the original RE3? You're exploring the map to figure out how to escape for a long time. You're making choices during certain events that lead you to different parts of the map, making the game different on replays since you can enter the clock tower from the front or back and find two different ways into the underground facility, and you're frequently pursued by the game's titular monster. I replay RE3 Original maybe once a year. I've played it maybe 15 times all the way through in my lifetime. I know the game, but I don't have it memorized. And every time I play it, the nemesis is on my ass. He appears in like 6 or 7 parts of the game, I think, maybe more. He surprises me. He scares me. He shows up at different parts depending on the order you do certain objectives. And he's insanely difficult to take down in the early game. He's a giant part of the game's identity. In the remake, in addition to turning him into a pathetic loser that dies to a single grenade, he only appears a couple times at the midpoint of the city, and then the rest of the encounters are scripted sequences where you just run away down a designated path. Oh no, it's the nemesis, run down the one hallway and escape. Oh no, it's the nemesis again, run down another hallway. Oh no, it's the nemesis, run down a hallway. Oh no, it's the nemesis, run up a burning building. This is why the RE3 cuts hurt so much. They didn't just cut a location or a moment or a fight or change mechanics. They ripped out the foundation of the original's gameplay. The exploration, the nemesis chases, the narrative choices, the puzzles, the different paths. It's just not Resident Evil 3 anymore, because Resident Evil 3 is about more than just Jill Valentine being a badass that shoots zombies and fights a big monster. And no amount of unlockable difficulties or replayable challenge modes or interesting speedrunning tech will ever change the fact that the first time playthrough experience of RE3 Remake is a freakish limping monstrosity missing half its face. I don't think I'll ever forgive Capcom for what happened with the RE3 Remake. I love the remakes of RE2 and RE4 immensely. They seem to have course corrected after Village, but RE3 Remake is something that's always going to hurt because it's probably never going to be made right. Alright, I hope that puts cut content into better context. Talking about it here has helped me understand some of my own feelings about it, and I hope it's helped you too. If they remake RE1 someday, cuts will be inevitable. All I hope for is that the majority of original content is there, and that it maintains the spirit of the original's gameplay. Thanks for watching, click that like and subscribe button, and stay tuned for more Resident Evil topics.